see and i will serve as a moderator for this particular session so today we have a professor sarju mohanty as a expert so professor mohanty has received his bachelor degree with honors in electrical engineering from orissa university of agriculture and technology bhuneswar in 1995 master degree in system science and automation from the iisc bangalore in 1999 and phd degree in computer science department from university of south florida in 2003 he is currently professor at university of north texas his research is in smart electronic system which has been funded by national science foundation semiconductor research corporation us air force iusstf and mission innovation he has authored more than 350 research articles four book and invented four us patents His Google Scholar H index is 36, I10 index is 134, with more than 5,800 citations. He introduced the secure digital camera in 2004 with built-in security feature designed using hardware-assisted security or secure by design principle. He is widely credited as the designer of the first digital watermarking chip in 2004 and first the pow low-power digital watermarking chip in 2006. He is a recipient of 12 Best Paper Award, Popular Specialist Award in 2020, IEEE Consumer Electronics Society Outstanding Service Award in 2020, and IEEE CS TCVLSI Distinguished Leadership Award in 2018, and P Rose Award for a Best Book Chapter in Physical Science and Mathematical Category in 2016. He has delivered nine keynotes and served as five panelists at various international conferences. He has been serving on an editor board of a various peer reviewed international journal like IEEE Transaction on Consumer Electronics IEEE Transaction on Big Data he is editor in chief of IEEE Consumer Electronics magazine he has been serving on a, as a BOG of IEEE Consumer Electronics Society and has served as a chair of technical committee on of TCVLSI and IEEE Computer Society during 2014 to 2018 he is the founding steering committee chair of a IEEE international symposium of smart electronic system steering committee and vice chair of IEEE CS symposium on ISVLSI and steering committee vice chair of OITS international conference on on information technology he has mentored two postdoctoral researchers and supervised 12 phd dissertation 26 ms thesis and 10 undergraduate project thank you sir for accepting our invitation it's our honor to have you over here now i request sir to proceed with the session thank you sir good morning everybody and thank you amit for the kind introduction and i'm really proud to be part of mnit the c4 that is going on every year in fact i really wanted to go in person okay i like to travel right <laughs> anyway so because of obvious reason we are meeting uh, electronically and i hope you will find all these uh, slides that i have are educating for you and for the audience so what we will talk here today is a concept that is called security by design or secure by design okay and uh, i will present that in the context of uh, cyber physical systems uh, so the outline of talk is like this we will uh, discuss what is cyber physical system it's a component on smart cities that is how i'll uh, i'll propose as a top down view uh, then uh, the security challenges uh, cyber physical systems uh, typical face there are variety of them starting from agriculture cyber physical system medical or healthcare cyber physical system energy and so on then what are the drawbacks of existing uh, security solutions so, and we will discuss uh, about the paradigm that we call secure by design or security by design and uh, the predecessor of it or a subset of it is hardware assisted security that also uh, we will be discussing and uh, conclusion and future direction and after so we'll have the discussion first and after that question answer session so feel free to uh, note down the questions that you can ask me uh, later on Uh, so i start with uh, the big picture of things this is the motivation i always present that is uh, urban migration that is uh, uh, population uh, in most of the countries are going towards urban and uh, it is little bit alarming that by 
what is projected that 70% of world population will be urban. Okay, so uh, as a result, the resources will be overwhelmed. Uh, limited resources are there, uh, starting from a living space to uh, healthcare resource and so on, energy and so on. So, how do we ensure the smart city sustains okay, while accommodating such large population? And uh, also, while smart city was getting a lot of attention for last 5-10 years, in fact, in India also a lot of initiatives are going on, then uh, the another concept called smart village also has started and IEEE is playing a major role in standardizing smart city, so as smart villages. And uh, uh, in some context, smart state and smart country, for example, Singapore is a smart country that can be envisioned. Uh, so, uh, what makes uh, city smart? What I call as three I's, that is instrumentation, interconnection, and intelligence. So, a lot of uh, uh, controllers, uh, actuators, uh, and sensors, all these are there. Okay, they are essentially uh, ears and eyes of the smart city. So, they are getting data, sensing things, and also helping to control things. And all the devices uh, that uh, sensors, in addition to computing in units and so on, they are connected. Interconnection is the important part. And then the data that we gather, we process through AI techniques, machine learning techniques, and so on. And as a result, we are able to make decisions. So these three eyes uh, essentially come from what is called Internet of Things. Internet of Things is not Internet. Okay. So uh, Internet was there. Okay. So Internet of Things originated when. Uh, something other than computers got connected to the internet. Okay, and uh, as far as I remember, uh, what is the first thing that was connected to the internet other than a computer is a toaster machine. Okay, so anyway, so Internet of Things essentially is the uh, we can say is the workhorse behind the smart cities. So this is the vision that uh, we can say is uh, what is in IoT if somebody asks, uh, this is the answer, okay, it's one model we can say, but there can be different models. So we have things, okay, so things are not just sensors or actuators. What is important there, they have connectivity capability, IP address, okay. And then comes the next layer with various type of local area network, body area network for internet of medical things, personal area network and for vehicular, uh, that is transportation, uh, CPS, we have uh, control area network, all these things come to picture. Then uh, cloud service, of course, and then various uh, uh, applications uh, are built uh, at the top of all these things. So we can envision IoT is a configurable dynamic global network of networks. Okay, so a lot of networks are there, they're connected. So it's a network of network, or we can say system of systems. Now, a specific example, yesterday we had a lot of discussion on Internet of Medical Things or Healthcare Cyber Physical System. So a specific example of IoT is IOMT, Internet of Medical Things. So we have here a specific type of sensor, that is the sensor that goes to uh, uh, human beings for different measurements, uh, whether it's blood pressure or glucose level and other things. Okay, so all these wearables, we can say implantable also, all these things, uh, okay, they are connected uh, uh, through Bluetooth or through uh, uh, Wi-Fi, and then uh, the data goes uh, through a uh, router and so on, and uh, as a result, overall what we get, and there is then electronic health record, all these things, so overall what we get is internet and medical things. And uh, so this is a specific example. Another example uh, is the industrial internet of things. So here, uh, uh, the uh, IoT is uh, in the application of uh, industrial manufacturing and so on. Okay, so industrial automation, then uh, uh, predictive maintenance, all these things are uh, uh, by the help of I IoT, industrial Internet of Things. And similarly, uh, actually, we can envision other things like Internet of Agro Things and uh, Internet of Energy for energy sector. Now, when we want to see that how IoT, CPS, and the smart cities are together, they are essentially making same thing at the end. It's something, uh, some uh, physical entity like smart, like cities are made smart cities. Okay, so in a uh, what you can say top down or bottom up view, in either way, uh, we can say IoT makes CPS, CPS makes smart city, or other way around. 
okay smart cities are made up of cyber physical systems and each cyber physical system has a physical entity and then cyber entity which is the iot we can visualize that way and example of a, a cps is a healthcare cps agriculture cps and cps and so on transportation cps all these are different examples so uh, that is how iot and cps uh, are related so this is the uh, what you can say thought that i have given in 2016 but uh, different people may have different things that is uh, some uh, researchers believe iot and cps are same they have their uh, own thoughts uh, so we can uh, agree or disagree but this is the vision that i have given uh, in the july 2016 uh, article and this article is considered as one stop reading for smart cities very well cited uh, thousands tens of thousands of uh, uh, reading are uh, there in article explo now when i was uh, doing little bit more reading that is uh, cps versus iot what i found if i model like this uh, uh, other researchers have given this model as well that is uh, uh, what cps consists of is a computation communication and control okay cyber physical system now then i go to iot uh, and iot also have similar or less same things uh, connect compute and communicate so when we see that is uh, uh, in uh, three c's of uh, uh, iot or three c's of cps they are more or less same but uh, as i said this is a better view i feel because uh, this is uh, uh like uh, iot cps and uh, bigger cyber physical systems uh, which is smart city are made possible through this so this is the model that i believe but some people think they are uh, more or less same anyway now an example of uh, uh, healthcare cyber physical system uh, example of a cyber physical system is healthcare cyber physical or hcps we had uh two hours to discuss on yesterday on this and uh, you can see the video or so you can see the slides and here uh, what we are doing uh, the physical entities here like hospitals uh, ambulance even uh, medical devices and so on all these are made smart and they are connected together they are talking to each other helping each other okay uh, with the help of internet and medical things and overall Uh, they are uh, uh, creating what we call as hcps or healthcare cyber physical system and another example of uh, cps is energy uh, cyber physical system or ecps so this is again a major thing okay like like healthcare energy we need we are talking to each other right now i'm here and you are listening to my talk okay energy is an important thing communication as is an important thing so energy cps is a, a like a market value point of there significant thing here and uh, smart grid is an example of a ecps where we have a, a regular grid made smart and uh, overall is a, is a part of ecps that we are talking about so uh, we can see a little bit different model of same ecps in a, uh, like uh, in the previous one we had a big picture where we had smart grid now i go to the details so we can have a smart grid uh, no doubt before that we can have smart generation okay uh, like uh, 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 thermal power plant and then uh, so renewable they are they are uh, working in synchronization and generating then grid is taking power to different places okay and uh, so smart grid here then we can talk about smart storage and uh, this is what middle i have written i like it very much is smart consumption okay so uh, energy particularly electricity is certain thing uh, that uh, is very much dependent on the consumption okay so if user doesn't consume generation uh, should not be done and if generation happens rather there will be instability in the grid of course one can say we can store but storing is limited okay storage battery is expensive as well okay so uh, in, a, in a cps point of view uh, we can say now smart grid smart generation smart storage and importantly as i said smart consumption is coming to picture so these are few examples uh, i mentioned okay of uh, cps and they are all made by corresponding internet of things okay now what are the security challenges of uh, cyber physical system that uh, we are so bare secret challenges that we will see this is a picture that we see all the time okay this becomes big news that uh, this database was hacked that database was hacked so these are cyber attacks okay happening okay and i call them uh, these are mostly it security issues okay not necessarily iot security issues but uh, these affect a lot of people that's why always becomes big news okay 
uh so for example some uh, retail stores uh, online uh, site was hacked or uh, yahoo's site is hacked and ransomware all these become big news because they affect a lot of people okay but these are as i said are it security issues now uh, iot security on the other hand that is coming as we make more and more physical entities uh, smart okay by integrating iot okay whether it call it iot iomt or uh, in uh, internet agro things all these variety of things are there so in general uh, when we say iot we have uh, previous slide i said it here i am talking about iot so when uh, we are integrating iot in uh, different physical systems okay so the security uh, things are becoming much more challenging okay for example a hardware trojan is a security threat uh, that can happen to different hardware uh then uh, uh like uh, side channel attack again um, this is a hardware uh, related problem and then a lot of people are already aware denial of service kind of attack that happens in a regular uh, connectivity that can happen as well with iot and uh, there are many more as you can see here tons of uh, them are been listed here and uh, many more uh, uh, basically keep evolving uh, day to day time so anyway so these are the uh, threats and there are some solution people are working okay and uh, people uh, including many of you must be working in this area so a lot of solutions are there okay but solutions are always uh, uh, what you can say not full proof okay so uh, that's why this is a competition between uh, new threats coming and different uh, solutions we give which are better than uh, what is existing as well as that can address uh, to new security threats okay anyway so this is iot security which is uh, different from what we saw here is uh, essentially it security now uh, iot security point of when i go to little bit details so that is i look at the devices so that we have uh, for example medical device rfid insulin pump and here uh heart rate monitor all this can be hacked okay pacemaker particularly can be if hacked it's a life threatening situation insulin pump as well similarly home devices okay all these uh, when they're connected to the internet they can be hacked okay smart thermostat all these things and uh, so phone and then other wearables here can be hacked and similarly business devices can be hacked as well and here transportation side if they are hacked those are again much more uh, serious problems so for, for example your autonomous car is hacked okay uh, those are serious problem and will, will and so as a drone anyway so these are uh, different uh, altogether a kind of threat and much more serious and uh, uh, so what you can say life threatening threat that we will see uh, in our discussions now when we uh, want to what you can say study okay what are the threats we can say we can uh, what you can say group them as some are direct security threats some are privacy aspect threats some are ownership uh, okay so there are three different ways so security are much more serious problem for example a hardware trojan is there which is affecting uh, the hardware security or the system security okay that can basically uh, cause a serious problem let's say hardware is part of a smart grid or a hardware is part of a car and there is trojan okay so those are serious problems okay uh, privacy also uh, some a uh, lot of people care for privacy for example they don't want others to know where they are or they don't want others to have access so privacy in that respect is a problem and then ip right is the intellectual property right who owns something some hardware some software okay or some media okay all these are uh, ip uh, intellectual property rights problem so these are three different groups and uh, a security point of view security i believe is a serious most serious followed by privacy followed by uh, ip rights okay so when i see a specific embedded uh, device so this is a basically a, a black box view of embedded system which has uh, some uh, asic okay dsp kind of pro, then some embedded processor like okay general purpose then some memory and so on and then uh, some uh, operating system okay and uh, applications are running to, at the top of it and this embedded system is processing some information generating certain information and if you see this uh, hypothetical system i have uh, is a, uh, uh, the attacks are variety of types okay that is uh, starting from physical attack here like uh, uh, side channel and so on then firmware attack can happen and uh, 
memory can be attacked so if memory uh, is attacked system can be made dysfunctional as well as data can be stolen then uh, uh, bit of network and other things that we are aware of for that uh, can happen so this you can see here uh, like in a, uh, so with the help of a hypothetical uh, embedded device uh, how we are uh, seeing that so many variety of security related and privacy and other related attacks can happen now this is a scenario where uh, basically i'm uh, showing that is uh, how different variety of this is a, uh, a basically energy cps kind of situation where the power grid is attacked okay the situation is far serious okay uh, uh, so that means you will be completely uh, like um, big cities can be made completely powerless so imagine that uh, uh, situation uh, uh, like if, uh, right now the we in a situation we are facing like uh, uh, most of the people in the planet are kind of in stay at home those kind of things but at least we have power but imagine if complete power failure happens by uh, because of power grid attack so those are much more serious problem actually and uh, then uh, in the transportation cps here okay that is uh, uh, if a smart car is is hacked so that means somebody you think you are dry, your car is driving itself because it is autonomous car but uh, somebody has taken over okay and uh, then a slight uh, change in the decision let's say you wanted to make a left turn somebody takes over and makes a right turn or you want to put a brake and somebody accelerates so those kind of situations are very serious uh, fatal uh, situation that can happen similarly drone drones are now becoming uh, what you can say uh, uh, much more useful in uh, uh, like smart city uh, application smart transportation also for example uh, some companies uh, are trying to deliver uh, their items okay to the doorsteps with the help of drones so if they are hacked then there are serious consequences so anyway so these are much more serious problem i consider okay these are security of the cyber physical system okay uh, and uh, much more serious consequence compared to it security and so on that we are, we are uh, already aware so a specific example of a privacy of a system okay why privacy of system is that important okay so as i said security the way i showed in the previous slide as much, are much more significant but privacy also important for example if somebody knows what are the uh, components that your smart car has potentially uh, here you see can a hacker can uh, what you can say make ideas or get better ideas how he or she can hack your system okay so system privacy uh, uh, can be exploited to make uh, security attacks eventually then location privacy okay you are in autonomous car things are connected to gps and uh, it's uh, driving itself uh, so others can basically find out where you are so that is a location privacy similarly one can say personal privacy okay so uh, that is why somebody should know that is what are your physical or uh, physiological data and so on okay so that's the personal privacy uh, aspect okay now uh, when we see a specific cps for example a smart healthcare cps that is healthcare cps okay uh, hcps so we have data aspect okay that is uh, uh, like everybody is uh, over to, to keep their uh, data healthcare data in particular uh, in confidential nobody should know and those aspects and uh, uh, some people should have only access to it for example your primary care practitioner or your uh, like a technician uh, that means who, uh, who is doing x-ray those kind of healthcare technicians and uh, then uh, like uh, device security for example you have pacemaker only a doctor whenever uh, doctor wants to configure it can have access not others so device security and other aspects are also there uh, in important in the hcps now uh, here we saw that is in a bigger uh, scale that is how a power plant car and other things so security can be problem and here in the healthcare domain uh, that is uh, devices for example uh, wearables can be problems and these are practical things uh, that's why i quote some newspapers okay that is uh, 2019 insulin pop was hacked and uh, uh, like uh, FDA issued uh, warning so that people are aware and similarly uh, like uh, here uh, other examples that we have seen is pacemaker uh, so like Metronix pacemaker here okay has Wi-Fi connectivity and it is connecting to the servers uh, and 
uh, as per the uh, news here, people, users are not aware that their pacemaker is connected to the internet. Okay, so those kind of warnings uh, uh, FDA gave, uh, and uh, so they just scary. That means imagine uh, you are part of the internet, and uh, somebody else uh, can potentially access your implantable devices or wearable devices. Okay, and uh, a, a hacker can drain your battery completely, can change the insulin doses. Let us say you are diabetic and as a result you are putting an insulin pump and then you know, the insulin doses can be controlled by somebody without uh, you know, authorization and so on. So that those are scary situations that uh, uh, practical people have seen and these are much more serious uh, I consider. Okay, so this is an example of uh, like uh, hacking happened. Okay, this is a uh, like a, a pacemaker and also other implantable uh, are there and here what happens uh, uh, like uh, uh, the, the RF connectivity uh, because of that uh, these, these are connected to the server and a hacker can uh, anybody can uh, hack uh, Wi-Fi connection okay so those are the problems that uh, and uh, the, uh, what is the negative consequence uh, I was uh, just mentioning uh, they can a hacker can drain the battery okay ha hacker can make it dysfunctional so those are serious problems so that uh, uh, in a cyber physical system, HCPS, we, uh, we have to worry not just the uh, electronic health record and so on, but the device security. Then, uh, if you see the IOMT device or HCPS devices, okay, can be attacked in many ways. So that means somebody can pretend as authorized. Uh, for example, let's say doctor wants to have access to control the doses or to configure uh, uh, the pacemaker and so on, and uh, but it's uh, essentially a hacker, and then. Uh, reverse engineering is a problem I consider. Many medical devices are available like any other hardware, it's cheap, okay. And similarly, I know like uh, even in the automotive market, okay, that is the transportation CPS, a lot of uh, electronics available which are uh, basically cheap and uh, they may not uh, do the function well or may not be safe. So anyway, so these are the things uh, that uh, and uh, more can happen, okay, and uh, uh, these uh, devices need to be protected uh, uh, from those attacks. Now, uh, so we discussed a few things which are healthcare CPS. Now, when we talk about the eCPS and ACPS or smart grid, okay, smart, so grid and then they become smart grids, so a lot of, uh, that's why uh, different software and other components, so SCADA system is here, a software uh, component and then there are different uh, PLCs and so on, so the, the different embedded devices can, can be there. And as a result, uh, and they are connected to internet, they are controlling the power plant, okay, so this is the control room and uh, these are generation system, distribution system and so on. And uh, even meters, okay, so all these are now connected and as a result, attack can happen in any layer and uh, as a result, uh, the whole system uh, may have uh, uh, instability and so on and a complete failure even uh, potential possible. There are uh, examples, so we will see. And when we hierarchically see the situation, consumption, distribution, transmission, and generation, there are different local area network. For example, here it's home area network, your neighboring area network, wide area network. So, uh, like intrusions can happen in any of these uh, network point of view, like denial of service and other things you have seen. But other uh, uh, hacker needs to find a door somewhere, okay, and any embedded system okay and any software okay can be a basically a lead uh, for the hacker to get into the system and create problems so these are serious problems that uh, we are looking at uh, as a solution okay so these are part of uh, energy cps now these are some examples that is how energy cps can be uh, can attack and there's some uh, have happened and for example you can 2015 attack then uh, uh, like here, Alabama 2006 attack, okay, and uh, this is a 2008 attack, uh, and another place, so on. So these are examples. So I'm not talking just like that, uh, like a theoretical point of view. These are practical, okay. That is, uh, and these are very serious, okay. So uh, for example, uh, closing a power plant or closing a, a completely uh, taking down a grid are a serious implication uh, to the overall city, even overall state. Okay, so uh, these are much more serious, uh, uh, like security problems, okay, uh, healthcare ISO, then this is power and similarly uh, transportation uh, than just the IT security point of view. 
Now, uh, transportation point of view, these are this is an example of a, a smart car. So that means this is a transportation cyber physical system or TCPS. And uh, actually, uh, like uh, Conjugatrix magazine, the real, uh, latest issue is on transportation cyber physical system. And uh, the next issue that is the September issue, we are putting uh, it on uh, on the healthcare cyber physical system. And some point after a couple of issues, uh, I have a plan to do agriculture cyber physical system. So stay tuned uh, to the Conjugatrix magazine. I typically put the table of content uh, in my LinkedIn and uh, Facebook, and you can have uh, access uh, to many things. So anyway, so this is here the secret aspect of the uh, transportation cyber physical system. And this is an example where I'm talking about uh, uh, like the autonomous cars. We, uh, which have hundreds of millions of lines of code okay, in the electronic control units. These are issues. So different issues are there uh, to control different things. For example, uh, to put the brake or to control the lights or uh, and, uh, other things. Okay. So anyway, there are hundreds of issues are there, the control units, and they have uh, some embedded hardware and other things. And they can be attacked okay, like any other you know, device uh, through different mechanism, relay, replay, jamming, and so on. Okay, and uh, those are uh, serious problems. For example, let us say you uh, somebody else has control to your autonomous car. You want to, your car uh, on, on its own should have put a brake, and somebody is accelerating it. Okay, or somebody yeah, your car on its own should have uh, turned left. Somebody is making it uh, turn right. So those are very serious consequences that one can think of. And here I envision this situation. Okay, this I borrowed from uh, this picture from somewhere. And you, what is the situation here? That is, uh, sensors okay, are sensing things and then uh, states of different physical entities and so on. And then we do here the uh, system, autonomous car system, is making some machine learning and then making certain decisions and so on. Here the information part. Then it decides, let's say, for example, to put a brake or to take a turn. So then, so this system, okay, uh, that is autonomous driving system, needs to tell the actuator, yes, put a brake now. Okay, but uh, that is what in, uh, should happen uh, okay, in a normal situation. But a hacker, let's say, sends signal so that the actuator doesn't get the signal from the sensor, from the actual sensor, rather gets the signal from the hacker. Okay, so this is a very serious uh, problem okay, that can happen. And this is a difficult problem. It's not that easy to solve because let's say you want to put some encryption here or something. Okay, so it will take some time. Okay, so uh, in this, what I've heard from experts that is uh, uh, on the transportation domain, suppose we need to make certain decisions here that is uh, uh, the co connection or the communication between sensor and actuator for certain uh, things for the car, then anything here should happen in the range of milliseconds time. Okay, so in the if we if the uh, process here is more than millisecond, then there can be different decisions that can uh, that is not good for the car. Uh, there can be serious consequences. So just by putting encryption and other things will not work. Okay, so that is a very, very difficult problem. So anyway, and people are definitely working now. I discuss uh, another thing is NFC. NFC why is a very small denomination of compared to what we have discussed here, which are much bigger things. Why just jump to NFC, then uh, RFID and so on? Uh, okay, so because these are part of a different CPS mechanism. For example, here logistic management and so on. Okay, uh, NFC is there. NFC also we are using payment and so on. So it's uh, they are part of there, and they are subjected to eavesdropping, relay attack, and other things. So uh, if they are hacked, okay, in a smaller domain, okay, so uh, they uh, they can create problems so for the bigger things like here. Uh, so let's say uh, physical access or transit and or ticketing other things which are uh, a bigger uh, a part of bigger CPS. So, uh, so this is a uh, thing that also one needs to solve. There are some solutions of course. Then RFID. RFID again is a small entity but RFID again used extensively for many different uh, applications in the CPS, so for example, in transportation CPS, in logistics, industrial IoT, and so on, all these NFC, RFID, all these can be used, and they can have serious uh, attacks, and uh, one needs to solve uh, those uh, as well. So, for example, uh, here we have shown RFID can be used for logistics, as asset management, access control, payment, and so on. These are part of CPS. So anyway, so uh, the, this uh, various forms of attack can happen, one needs to solve these as well. Now, uh, uh, hardware, 
are part of uh, the CPS. Essentially, if we see what makes CPS, okay, CPS we discussed makes I IoT makes CPS with the, when working with the physical entity. And this IoT has different hardware, different softwares, okay, and then there are middleware, firmware, all these things are there, and all needs to be protected. Okay, software, a lot of things people have primarily worked uh, when it's secret means people think of, okay, protecting the operating system, protecting the network with a Wi-Fi password, those are trivial things people uh, try. But uh, we have still secret problems that means they have not worked well, okay, because a lot of things are not solved, okay. So, for example, hardware trojan. So, hardware trojan, I pre present this, this I put this diagram in my book in 2015 and a very simple diagram, what I explain that is okay, you are happy, you have a, a cryptographic chip or a watermarking chip for different applications, but uh, uh, what happens, uh, let's say you think uh, your, your data is here and you get uh, the binary goes here, you get binary here. Then very simple, let's say somebody puts a multiplexer here and then puts a copper cable here, okay, so that means input just goes to output through a multiplexer. Then in this output here, uh, you can uh, sometimes get uh, protected signal, uh, protected information, okay, or sometimes get uh, unprotected information. So here a multiplexer here is serving as a trojan, okay, so, uh, so your output may be just coming from the input, it's a binary and you may not be aware. So this is a simple example how a simple design modification can uh, create serious problems and then this signal here can be used uh, to compromise uh, this overall security that this cryptographic processor could have provided okay and uh, then uh, this can be exploited when this uh, whole, uh, encryption chip is a part of big part of bigger system this can be used to exploit the security of the overall system okay so that can be serious for the cps now uh, encryption uh, like everybody thinks, okay, okay so, I mean, secret means encryption, right? That is how, how it has been, okay? So, uh, so how secure are the encryption, uh, okay? So, uh, analysis shows when encryption really started, okay, people thought it's uh, quite secure, one to a bit, uh, theoretically can take uh, like years and years, okay? So, uh, like uh, one cannot break it, but that is not the case. People are able to break 128 bit. And uh, that is uh, what, uh, like uh, this uh, community who does this research and provides us the secret mechanism, what they are doing, they are essentially using longer keys, 2 bit, 6 bit, 5, 12, 2000, something like that people have been using. Okay, so uh, what is the intention there? To make the brute force attacks difficult by increasing the key size. So that making guess takes quite a bit of time. That has been the approach. Okay, and we have been living with it. But uh, there are other things that can be done and we need to do, that is what uh, the research is needed. So anyway, so AES, we have been thinking it's secure, but by the help of side channel attack, which uh, we do not do the brute force approach, so that means we don't have to take years and use a lot of computational resource. Okay, we uh, to do, we are smart, we do side channel attack, that means we uh, listen to the device behavior, okay, uh, uh, that is through acoustics noise here, or we analyze the power, we analyze uh, compressional time and other things, and in fact, uh, even the radiation and other things people can do, and uh, in the process, uh, breaking uh, encryption is not a matter of years, but a matter of hours, and uh, I remember I borrowed this slide from another researcher, and uh, he was mentioning that is uh, with a hundred dollar kit, okay, they can break any encryption with uh, uh, within an hour. Okay, that is how, how easy it is uh, with the help of side channel attacks. Okay, and the side channel attack can be done with the help of uh, what is called differential power analysis, okay, or uh, co correlation power analysis. Okay, so it's essentially you are monitoring the power with the help of a oscilloscope light kind of device, and we want to break the security here of this uh, smart card okay we don't have to break the encryption at all we, we study its power profile and so on and then we make guess and uh, we keep on uh, converging to a right guess uh, till we succeed by doing some statistical analysis and so on so cp and dpa methods are uh, there okay and uh, like uh, uh, so when you compare which one is more effective people can debate but uh, uh, it seems uh, uh, like uh, CPA is uh, effective and faster, okay. But uh, either way, okay, so those these methods are available uh, that uh, 
defeats the encryption without in, uh, defeating the underneath algorithm rather uh, exploits the hardware implementation of it okay anyway this is a uh, important uh, slide why i say that is uh, when we are making things smart and putting lot of hardware and software okay middleware firmware and so on okay because uh, we want to integrate iot and other embedded devices and so on so uh these uh, firmware uh, like uh, if we uh, reverse engineer or we uh, put a firmware which is not a good firmware and uh, so th that can be easily hacked so in the process uh, because of the security problem of the of firmware one can get control to the embedded system and as a result to the overall uh, cyber physical system so this is a serious problem as well not just uh, we have discussed software a lot of people are doing i discussed many hardware aspects uh, uh, so where security problem can happen and firmware is also a equally important thing for example in a, a transportation cps and so on a firmware or a, a smart grid uh, that is nlcps uh, firmware uh, hacking can be a serious problem okay and uh, memory as a component though we just discussed previous slide firmware okay memory uh, like it can be attacked in many ways and particularly let's say very simplistic thinking okay wherever data stays if i can take that uh, control of that then I, I have access to all the data that is a simple thinking okay that can be done okay and uh, but in addition to that memory can be hacked to take control over the uh, whole system the embedded system Okay, as a result, uh, overall uh, uh, system where embedded processor is playing a small role. So, and uh, just uh, like uh, on, uh, we have seen uh, network attack and so on. So here, similarly, like uh, snooping attack, uh, then splicing attack, all these uh, replay attack, all these variety of things can happen uh, uh, for the memory. So, and this is one important thing uh, that is coming that is called AI security. BA is important uh, we uh, like uh, for starting from anything that uh, uh, has a smart component and so on okay ai is playing a major role in the back end okay ai or machine learning okay and they are essential models okay so models are generated from the data okay and then uh, those models help to uh, make certain decisions and as a result the system is working on its own autonomous okay and uh, smart so uh, if a model is bad okay then uh, we have bad uh, sorry data is bad we have bad model uh, then mo some model also can be changed by hackers data can be uh, poisoned okay all these are different problems okay and uh, those are ai security aspects that uh, people are now uh, worrying okay particularly because of uh, autonomous car and uh, here is an example uh, that uh, people are worried uh, as a uh, example of how AI security is critical. Let us say uh, we have uh, smart transportation, okay, or that autonomous car, and this stop uh, should be labeled as a stop sign, okay. But a hacker labels this as a speed limit sign, okay. So this is a problem. You can see this right side, okay. Instead of uh, the autonomous car identifying that as a stop it identified that as a speed limit of something. So as a result, you can see the, the, the consequences of this wrong decision because of bad model, okay? And this is a very important problem that is really hot in the security domain uh, that uh, people are trying to solve, okay? Anyway, so this problem uh, is a serious problem that I'm envisioning for the cyber physical system in general uh, will have uh, uh, for different application, not, not just transportation, also uh, in the energy sector, uh, smart grid and so on, it can have serious consequences. Now, what are the drawbacks of existing security, existing security solutions? Okay, so there are, we know variety of security issues are there, okay, confidentiality, then uh, authentication problems and other security, and there are some solutions, okay, people have been working, that is why we, it's not like one day we solve all the problems, so we have solved to a certain extent, okay, authentication, for example, by using POF, we have done uh, quite a bit of these solutions. And in fact, uh, uh, a lot of people have done in the past public cryptography and other things, different types of solutions, okay? But they have their own set of limitations and uh, that is why uh, nothing is fully solved. So we keep on doing and uh, there is always ample scope, particularly the uh, domain side uh, discussed, uh, they have ample scope to work. 
Now, when a differentiate IT security versus IoT security, okay, that small O in the middle makes a big difference. Okay, so a lot of uh, security solutions uh, as of now, okay, have been coming from the thought of IT. Okay, that is the problem. Okay, so if we want to solve IoT security from an IT uh, point of view, okay, we have a problem there itself. Okay, so uh, IoT security needs to be solved from a hardware perspective, from a system perspective, not from an IT or com com communication perspective, okay, or information perspective. Okay, so uh, one of the major thing I see that is uh, IT security point of view, the number of devices are relatively small compared to IoT. IoT are much more uh, like uh, thousand x more variety of security. And uh, another important problem is this one uh, iot devices may not have each one of them may not have computational power okay so we have to uh, do the security under assumption that the host may not have computational capability to run the security so those are big, um, far bigger challenges okay one i said variety of devices okay lot of devices and the devices may not have computational power okay and then uh, here are much more uh, life-threatening situations uh, in the security breach uh, that uh, can happen. So uh, that's why these are serious problem, IoT security or CP security as compared to IT security. Now uh, here, for example, uh, in the wearable, let us say somebody is hacking the insulin pump, okay, and controlling uh, the dosage here, okay, or somebody uh, some way uh, the, the uh, physiological data that a sensor should get, somebody is misleading okay so those are serious problem and these devices we are seeing have serious problem of battery and computational capability they do not have uh, luxury of battery life they do not have serious computational capability and much more serious problem is implantable okay so let us say uh, let's say this is a uh, brain pacemaker or in heart pacemaker all these have implantable uh, point of view they have limited battery life Okay, I should have another slide. Okay, so this is an example here. This is implantable, this is wearable. Implantable in particular has serious uh, battery uh, problem. Okay, and uh, at the same time, computational capability is very limited. So any security solution needs to take that into account. That is uh, like uh, we have uh, uh, to have solution which doesn't consume a lot of battery, which is uh, safer, and uh, which is uh, also uh, like uh, size point of view and uh, weight point of view are reasonable. So then only it can be you know, solved. So now uh, to give you this uh, exact example, like I was uh, doing a lot of search, so that is how bad is the battery life, okay, of a pacemaker or a neurotransmitter. Okay, so I saw pacemaker doesn't have quite a bit of compressional capability, okay, and uh, it has, it is a very reliable device, of course, it is life-saving for a lot of people, but, and it has a battery life of 10 years. And if, uh, so like uh, now, the new generation pacemakers, they are connected to Wi-Fi and connected to the internet, and as a result, if somebody hacks and drains the battery, it's a very serious problem, okay? That is, uh, uh, people have to go through different uh, surgery to replace it, and uh, those surgeries are uh, risky procedures. Okay, similarly, this is a neurotransmitter that is a brain pacemaker and so on. So these have, uh, this has a battery life of uh, eight years, which is far more, uh, two years shorter than this. So all these have uh, serious consequences if battery is drained and other things uh, and somebody unauthorized reconfiguring or doing some things. Okay, so these are difficult problems to solve compared to IT security. So we saw a medical situation. Now, if we go to transportation cyber physical system, so here, uh, latency is a very serious problem I consider, and that's why you can see here, like uh, suppose you are uh, uh, traveling, okay, and you, know, you lost a road, and uh, you are changing a direction, and so on. Like you can see in the current situation how much time GPS takes. Recalculating it takes certain time, but you cannot expect. Uh, let us say you wanted to take a left turn to a right turn, or you wanted to put a brake. I'm talking about a transportation CPS when uh, car is driving itself okay so then it can happen when uh, i remember this kind of situation when you take a wrong turn or gps is not showing the right direction our human intelligence comes and we make corrections but autonomous car if does that it's impractical to do 
And so here in this process, what I'm trying to tell is the in the transportation or autonomous car the point of view, uh, security is a much more serious problem and uh, security has to be foolproof. Okay, that is one. And the second, security mechanism needs to act in a latency constraint. That means in the uh, in the order of millisecond, it needs to take a decision. Couple of seconds means car can uh, basically hit uh, um, another car or hit a road and other things. So those, those uh, uh, road barriers and so on. So those problems can happen. So uh, latency constraint is serious here. And uh, if you go to uh, this aerial vehicles, okay, drones and so on, uh, the problems are far difficult. Okay, they are, uh, if we are talking about in the car case, millisecond, imagine how fast decisions needs to be taken here security solution that's when it's work much faster here and these have again uh, like uh, medical device we discussed okay this can of course not that less battery life uh, compared to a medical device these are far bigger battery we can have but uh, battery uh, is uh, limited to uh, the range of the drones so, so if we consume battery by using secret mechanisms then the range of the drone gets uh, reduced. So this is a very difficult trade-off in the UAV security between energy and latency. Okay, uh, I was mentioning in the healthcare domain, energy primary constraint in the transportation domain, latency is a primary constraint in the uh, UAV here, uh, uh, that is energy and uh, latency both are uh, important constraint. And in the smart grid security, I was trying to do the analysis so that is probably smart grid because uh, power is not a problem we can use the power but still people uh, expect uh, that is uh, the embedded devices who are doing the security mechanism and other things uh, for the smart grid where the security uh, flow can happen now people want uh, so those are essentially it's not like you have embedded device means it is ready to free to use as much power it want but to certain extent we can uh, use power as compared to uh, the health and uh, UAVs we saw, but still we want uh, energy overhead to be less uh, and uh, communication latency things should be fast reacting. Okay, we cannot because if something is secure, we cannot uh, expect uh, uh, it to take uh, quite a bit of time and so on. And uh, so in the smart grid domain, uh, because there is uh, bigger entities at stake. Okay, that is whole city can be power, have power failure and other things. So, uh, or a state can have a total power failure. So that's why these are far bigger things that uh, one needs to worry about in the smart grid security point of view. And uh, in the computer, uh, IEEE computer magazine uh, last issue, we have a, a cyber security for smart grids. Where I was guest editing that uh, we have very good articles uh, on this area okay, that is covering various security aspects of smart grid that I. Uh, what you can so bring to your attention uh, so that you can uh, read those uh, articles. And uh, I discussed Bitcoin, uh, sorry, uh, blockchain a little bit here. So this is uh, uh, a component that is uh, essentially being explored to be integrated anywhere, any CPS that we can talk about. Uh, and it is uh, uh, distributed, decentralized, those aspects are there. Uh, so uh, I want to touch upon how uh, what are the, uh, what you can say, problems that it can have. And as I said, it is being explored to use in almost everything. Okay, even though it came originally for Bitcoin, it uh, probably inventor did not uh, intend to, uh, to be used in variety of things, but people then found that the, a lot of people uh, paid attention. They are exploring to use it in everywhere, not just cryptocurrency, uh, healthcare, finance, always property, and so on, everywhere people are trying to use. Uh, where it, whereas it was never meant to be used that. So these are the things that needs to be solved, overcome uh, for the blockchain before it can be used. It has a high energy demand, uh, it doesn't scale well, and it takes a lot of time, and a privacy, and uh, that is uh, uh, on-chain storage capital limit, a lot of problems are there, people are trying, and 51% attack is also there. I think last year, at least Bitcoin was hacked two times, okay, and the bit one percent attack was responsible for it. So all this needs to be solved uh, for blockchain to find uh, useful in uh, the application that people are thinking. So energy point of view, I discussed this that uh, blockchain original with proof of work uh, it was not meant to be 
used or like this that uh, the way people are thinking okay so as an example a bitcoin transaction is 80000 times more power consuming than a credit card transaction okay so it's a lot of, uh, of energy use similarly mining a bitcoin is a lot of money as well okay it's a energy equivalent of two years us household energy consumption is a lot of money so uh, so security point of view uh, the blockchain has a lot of issues okay like uh, uh, pick one person data for example okay and other things that uh, uh, it can have similarly privacy issues also people think blockchain they are using everything is hidden answer is no blockchain has serious privacy issues okay for example bitcoin has no privacy aspect here at all okay and uh, these are different cryptocurrencies and uh, slowly uh, different uh, new cryptocurrency are adding uh, privacy aspects but uh, uh, it's uh, as you can see here it's, it's uh, privacy is seriously compromised with this and similarly smart contract is an example uh, of, uh, all, of uh, blockchain okay it has its own set of problems and uh, uh, smart contract is implemented uh, uh, ethereum and other or different uh, nero i think another implementation so it has serious uh, uh, vulnerability issues that uh, uh, people have found so anyway so uh, you can see here that means uh, blockchain uh, which can be, uh, which is rather, I would say, is part of a lot of variety of IoT or CPS because everybody is trying as if uh, blockchain is solution for everything. Okay, so uh, you can read a lot of articles that uh, in my website. Uh, in fact, uh, recently uh, in the IEEE Computer, uh, one blockchain article we wrote, IEEE Computer Magazine, that is uh, blockchain, uh, uh, how good or bad it is for healthcare applications. So you can read that you will see we have discussed uh, it's a uh, blockchain it's easier to uh, you uh, it's a uh, difficult to use in healthcare that is the point and uh, we have a very good uh, different discussions in that it's not straightforward to use blockchain uh, for anything that we just think we, the way people are trying okay anyway and uh, so those attacks that we see we saw various, various types of cps okay can come from uh, software and hardware resources and software is quite common Okay, people attack uh, the systems uh, remotely through software and uh, we know denial of service, uh, then uh, uh, password based attacks, you know, spoofing attack, all these things happens. But I want to bring uh, your attention to hardware based attacks. Hardware are much more serious and very difficult to find out. Okay, for example, Trojan. Okay, so a Trojan is existing at, I uh, gave an example, very sm small hardware modification that may exist, but people cannot easily find that okay uh, unlike software okay and those are very serious and very difficult uh, attacks and this is where uh, the cps problem should be solved by solving hardware security using hardware uh, to solve hardware problems so similarly uh, when we uh, like uh, think of so solution uh, software would suppose we do a software based solution versus hardware based solution okay so here i discuss uh, attacks here are the solutions so uh, software has its own advantage disadvantage hardware its own advantage disadvantage uh, so uh, potentially uh, hardware uh, has to be there all the time because hardware has better capability to solve and software may be used to a certain extent okay so uh, nothing is a full proof software has serious uh, disadvantage of latency for example uh, so and then software needs a resource to run you cannot have a software security in a pacemaker or uh, similar devices which do not have computation capability at all okay so the or or insulin pump so the, you cannot do iot security with software based solutions only so iot security has more potential for hardware based so of course i agree um, potentially it security can be better solved by software based approaches now, when we see uh, those, uh, the CPS design, okay, we need to solve this uh, multiple objective uh, problem uh, as an optimization point of view. That is energy, security, and then this is the AI aspects coming, then the time, okay, then safety, and then the cost, recurrent cost, that is the design cost and the operational cost. So all these have to be optimized. These are very difficult problems and uh, there are uh, challenges for the design engineers to uh, basically optimize all these things at a time okay anyway so then uh, like if we see right now quantum computing is coming okay and a lot of uh, big uh, companies are uh, essentially competing who will have the first quantum computer 
and uh, what is observed a 2048 bit RSA encryption could be hacked by quantum computer in eight hours. Okay, so that is a serious uh, situation. That means uh, in theory, that means uh, quantum computers, if they becomes mainstream computing, the existing uh, security mechanism, whatever we have, are meaningless. Okay, it can just like that, uh, uh, basically uh, hack or break any any security mechanism that we are we as know right now. So that's the uh, security nightmare that we may face, and as a result, people are of course working on different uh, security solutions so, so that they are ready. So now. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, some set of uh, slides that I have where, where I discuss how to solve this problem. So, what is the problem right now we have? That is, we have a multi object trade off, okay? Uh, that is, uh, energy problem and uh, security problem, all these are there. And how we take all those in account and uh, solve the security problem of uh, cyber physical system. Okay, and uh, the paradigm that I uh, call as hardware assisted security or uh, security by design or secure, they use those terms interchangeably, secure by design. Okay, uh, that is a new paradigm that is evolving. So, how that originated? Actually, privacy by design, okay, uh, originated first, okay, because it, that is how it came from the community. And you might have been aware uh, that is uh, general. Uh, data Protection Regulation, GPDR, okay, that European Union put together in 2018. As a result, uh, uh, we did a lot of things uh, as far as I remember. Anyway, so GPDR has a component, Privacy by Design, and I know the person uh, who really started this, uh, uh, Privacy by Design, okay. And then uh, we have been thinking, okay, Privacy by Design came, okay, why not Security by Design or Secure by Design? And as a result, uh, uh, we worked with uh, the person who uh, came up with privacy by design, which is uh, which part of uh, GDPR, okay. And uh, in the March 2020 issue of IEEE Consumer Electronics Magazine, uh, that I am the editor in chief, okay, we ran a special issue, thematic issue, okay, where we discussed uh, security and privacy by design in more details. So I definitely invite all of you to read uh, the. Uh, March 2020 issue, uh, which is on security and privacy by design. You will learn much more details of it. So, what is here important and uh, particularly important? The uh, person who is uh, person behind this privacy by design has an article there uh, who, who discusses uh, uh, much more details of privacy by design. And I have certain things on security by design. Okay. Anyway, so the key idea here in the security by design or secure by design or privacy by design is. Uh, work on the security and privacy aspects from the step zero of the design process. That is the idea. Okay, not you finish the design and see what you can fit for security. Okay, so uh, so that means this has to security and privacy. Those have to happen. Okay, as a practice in the design flow. Okay, starting from the first step. Okay, so that we do not have retrofit. Uh, the security mechanism and sometimes the retrofitting may be very difficult okay that's the idea okay so every step think security that means have the features you may or may not use it but have the features so whenever needed you use that's the big idea so so there are certain principles uh, that uh, actually the inventor uh, of privacy by design uh, proposed and i have modified uh, actually i took and modified it for the security approach and uh, as I said, in the March issue, uh, 2020 issue was Consumer Electronics Magazine, we have a lot of details of this. So, uh, security has to be proactive, okay, approach, so that means you are ready to do things, okay, and it's by default, you need it, that is how, and it has to be embedded to the design, okay, so as a result, you can uh, basically mm, have a better uh, thing, completely integrated with it. Then fully functional and not a zero sum game. That means we are optimizing all the engineering point of view, and that is all the energy, security, safety, all these things, so that we are optimizing uh, in a right way, so that we have a very good design. Then completely life cycle protection has to be there end to end, okay, and then nowhere that is source end to the uh, consumer end, okay, complete end, we have complete security mechanism, okay, and remember, these are, we are talking about very big CPS, cyber physical system, not uh, just a single device or a single thing, okay, and uh, so each uh, device, uh, each uh, software, hardware component, all these things have to be designed uh, with this approach, so as the overall system, okay, and things should be visible and transparent, okay, and uh, 
obviously the um, user who is uh, using uh, these devices uh, one should be respecting the users as well anyway so uh, this actually uh, we saw just uh, privacy by design uh, security by design or secure by design all these uh, paradigms uh, like recent rather recent and privacy by design has been now well accepted and it's, it will take some time for a security by design to get accepted uh, but uh, hardware assisted security is one approach that is reasonably accepted by many people and i have been uh, using these in, in fact first time in 2000 uh, uh, six or nine, okay, I uh, started using this term in the context of watermarking. So I called hardware assisted watermarking, okay, and then uh, so which was for IP rights, okay, or data protection, we can say, okay, so that the first time I coined, and uh, then I see a lot of people have started using, okay, so this is uh, essentially I can, because I see the details, so I consider this as a subset of this so the uh, whatever was thought process here that is the uh, design process uh, during the design process we worry about the security and i uh, that's why i define like the security provided by hardware for the hardware for the system for the information okay is the hardware assisted security and uh, i consider this as a subset of uh, security by design so uh, like uh, uh, how the security by design or hardware or has uh, is important uh, or significant as compared to the software based security. Okay, so uh, like software based, based security by nature is not foolproof because it needs a hardware general purpose processor to run it. Okay, let's say you want to run a uh, like a network uh, security and so on, it needs uh, some sort of hardware to run and they have their own uh, security problems so the, the hardware uh, on which the software is running okay and uh, software can be broken uh, with this matter of spending time and uh, for the quantum computing time uh, software security will be for the uh, what you can see ineffective so as a result uh, that uh, software uh, may not be greatly useful uh, right now it's not so as in future so hardware assisted security has okay can have uh, uh, put, uh, has the potential to provide full proof solution and uh, this is a part of uh, secure by design or security by design and with this theme i'm running a scm uh, special issue scm journal of uh, emerging technology computing scm jtc i invite all of you uh, whoever are working in this area to contribute and uh, if you need uh, more information about the uh, special issue i can i'll be happy to provide them okay anyway so th this is a new paradigm Okay, and uh, when I uh, was reading a little bit, okay, what are the secret hardware secret primitives that uh, we can think of? Okay, so I find uh, that a TPM, okay, trusted platform model, is an example we can think as a security hardware security paradigm. Uh, these are there in uh, many motherboard and so on, and we can use it. So it has its own set of uh, advantage disadvantage. This is working. Okay, this is the uh, this is used. And then hardware secret module, I was uh, trying to read and uh, learn more. So HSM is also used, but these are heavy duty. So that means it is a part of a server and so on, and uh, cannot be used for uh, IoT. This reasonable can be used, or uh, TPM can be used for IoT. And here, another thing I uh, like a trust zone that is uh, on the ARM hardware and so on. So this has also reasonable capability, but this is uh, uh, as I know, is more preparatory that is running in the uh, ARM hard, basically processor and so. So then uh, POF, that is, uh, I work in this area and also uh, collaborate with uh, Amit uh, on, on this area, the certain extent we are using for medical device security. This has a lot of potential, okay, POF. Why? Because of uh, uh, this is uh, having very minimal overhead. Okay, so HSM lot of overhead, TPM uh, not much overhead. Okay, this is reasonable type. This has uh, Trojan is a good company software and hardware. This has reasonable overhead, but Puff is hardware and uh, it's a very minimal overhead uh, compared to any of the other solutions. Puff has uh, potential. It has its own disadvantage as well, but energy overhead point of view, area overhead point of view, Puff has a lot of potential. So it's a uh, hardware primitive okay, that uh, generates uh, numbers uh, which uh, uh, can be used for various cryptographic and security applications. That's the idea. Okay, And uh, the challenges, that means the input we give, generate certain response which is unique to the hardware. 
that's the big idea and uh, we do not store this response okay the, that provides the security aspect okay so if you visualize this it's a harder model okay it can be a ring oscillator can be a memory and uh, can be um, combination multiplex and so on okay so puff variates so circuits can be used and uh, given various challenges generates various response which is unique to this hardware that's the key idea similarly uh, if different type of uh, different pops we use pop 1 pop 2 and we give same input it generate uh, different output so uh, that is the uniqueness uh, the uh, that is this response and the challenge they are unique to a specific hardware that is what being exploited okay to use for different uh, security uh, mechanisms okay so the key idea it doesn't store okay the way we traditionally we store the key and this and that okay we do not store here okay this response is unique to this hardware that's the uh, big idea okay and uh, the hardware is generating those numbers okay that uh, response is here okay because of uh, what is underneath uh, a non electronic process variation that it has so this uh, i was working on this area around 10 years ago uh, like <coughs> several students graduated in this area the, i was doing non electronics so that's why i understand the underneath details here so i remember we are modeling process variation that is coming because of uh, channel length uh, and uh, oxide thickness all these things so those uh, um, uh, basically variations okay which are uh, as you can say nano scale 10 to the power minus 9 okay those variations which happens because of the manufacturability and so on okay so they give rise to variations and uh, those variations uh, we if you capture okay uh, as a response okay we get uh, uh, basically here the randomness that we are looking for which can be used uh, in the security mechanisms Th that's a big idea okay and uh, so essentially semiconductor manufacturing process variation is used as a useful thing uh, for uh, uh, for the security applications that's the idea here and any topology that we can consider uh, actual tons of variety of pops are there okay these are ring oscillator based pop that we designed uh, and uh, uh, then uh, we have uh, very good results uh, and what is important is the power overhead and the speed okay so you can see here microwatt of power and nanosecond kind of speed that uh, uh, we have seen uh, and they are very suitable for the transportation cps or healthcare cps and we have demonstrated them in uh, uh, practical applications uh, already and uh, the way blockchain everybody is trying to use everywhere when something works people think it can be used anywhere so like that pop is being explored to use in many applications for example under the generator then you can use it for encryption eventually device authentication and memory protection software licensing like that and even hardware um, ownership and ip right this this can be used so anyway so these are the things and uh, uh, so this is a uh, idea that I want to bring to your attention. Uh, what is the unique thing here is uh, how uh, secure by design okay, approach you can follow by going to the drawing board of a uh, system, embedded system we call or, or a bigger system. So uh, here, uh, what uh, I demonstrated, okay, this was actually a long time ago, but uh, like uh, stu my students have worked on variety of versions of this and uh, always uh, people like uh, the, the variations that we give in this research. So anyway, so here the idea is uh, how integrate the secret mechanisms, whatever we want, secret modules and so on, and then uh, rework on the power budget of uh, individual component. So what is the important point is that uh, we add new things, but at the same time, we keep the power budget low. Okay, so as less power uh, consuming device it, uh, overall it can. So that's the idea we can consider. That means going to the step zero of design, taking care of the security, at the same time, uh, ensure that power budget is not compromised. So that's the idea. Anyway, so then we have to try obviously different, uh, maybe lightweight security, maybe different compression and other things. As a result, you can have that optimization. And uh, here, uh, so we have different designed different variations of that. Uh, here we played with uh, the uh, compression engine and uh, here we have uh, better portable graphics, a different type of better uh, graphics, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, video compression, okay, compared to the 
original MPEG-4 or H.264. Anyway, so we have uh, done a lot of variety of designs. So as even sensors, so ADCs, all these designs we have done uh, to ensure the same thing that is, as I said, provide security, but do not uh, uh, increase the power budget. So that's the big idea. And here, uh, an example is uh, how we go and uh, redesign uh, the uh, healthcare devices and then uh, as a result, uh, the power budget is very minimal at the same time, uh, like it provides robust security. So uh, this is, uh, uh, these are the different uh, wearable and implantable, okay, and we integrate POF, which is uh, uh, in our case, a very minor power budget, as I was mentioning, we have different type of POF. Uh, here, for example, this is uh, uh, 200 to 219 microwatt, this 250 microwatt, all these pops uh, are very less power budget, but uh, I'd be very happy if uh, we can further reduce, which can happen, okay, depending on technology and so on as we keep doing things. So anyway, so then we have a corresponding protocol, okay, what kind of protocol doctor will have when a device is implanted or, uh, or device uh, is given to the user or the patient. And then when uh, reconfigure what kind of protocol, so all these we have developed, okay. Uh, this is what we call enrollment process and uh, this is the device registration procedure, okay. All these things we have developed and what is important point is that uh, we are not storing these responses with this and that, okay. So we store uh, only server pop challenge, okay. So this one, uh, one challenge we store, okay. Rest all are generated on the fly. As a result, there is no uh, security flaw. Okay, people cannot hack. Uh, one can get uh, one can only get access if uh, uh, these two pops are matched with each other. Okay, and uh, accordingly, uh, we have authentication process. Okay, uh, authentication page that means a doctor uh, legitimate who wants to reconfigure the pacemaker and so on the medical device. How he or she can do. So th this is the procedure that we presented. So this is full proof. We have uh, verified with a lot of different instances, and there is a very good. Um, user interface we designed and uh, um, uh, overall okay, with a lot of um, experiment result uh, with uh, 200 uh, microwatt average power okay, a lot of the readings with uh, different data point and uh, this 64 bit 128 bit uh, uh, key width were experimented okay and uh, <clears throat> this is uh, in the uh, matter of second we are able to verify the security now this is uh, uh, iglo as mentioning yesterday so as today here uh, in this uh, we have done a lot of things uh, healthcare point of view okay and uh, what is the big picture here is eventually secret mechanism the moment we are talking about insulin pump it has to have a secret mechanism and uh, then the data the healthcare data that is going from here okay have to be stored some way in uh, privacy assured or secure fashion so this can be done in a cloud storage with certain software or one can take help of hardware security but this is uh, more likely harder and as a result we started this work okay this is with uh, MIT Jaipur with uh, uh, Amit uh, and uh, his student so they have done amazing work and this is an example where uh, we have explored arbiter POF okay 64 bit 120 bit 256 bit all these experiments are done and which uh, essentially this work uh, that we have seen okay here we have uh, uh, POF at the doctor terminal the, and the edge server at the uh, as well as uh, POF in the uh, devices okay and th that's one paradigm we have experimented that works with ring oscillator and this is a arbiter uh, pop based security mechanism and uh, different pops and so on and this also has been validated and working uh, with a higher reliability so a lot more work can be done this is just a beginning okay and uh, with uh, uh, this we think uh, actually uh, healthcare security problem healthcare cyber physical system problem can be solved with a very minimal overhead. Now, when we talk about, uh, remember I mentioned, firmware is an important point, uh, important component, uh, hardware, firmware, software, all these things are software I do not address, okay, but uh, hardware and firmware are my interest, okay. I think uh, software, a lot more work has been done, but solving a software security is not solving CPA security as I have explained, okay, hardware needs to be solved and hardware can uh, security by the help of hardware for the system for the hardware is the way to go uh, if you want to solve IoT or CPA secret problem. So here is uh, uh, like an XP semiconductor uh, the solution uh, that uh, how they can they are validating the firmware so that 
for example firmware in the in a, a electronic control unit of a car those are serious problems or a, a smart grid or a smart healthcare also can have similar problems okay that uh, uh, the firmware security needs to be maintained so that we uh, ensure that legitimate firmware is installed in the hardware otherwise the uh, system or the embedded system will behave uh, is a security compromise is there and one can take control of it and uh, then get control of bigger systems which is it is a part for example like smart grid okay vehicular security transporter security point of view is a very important problem and uh, i ran a special issue in uh, november 2019 uh, consumer returns magazine covering this this is a very important problem and uh, this uh, work uh, how pof can uh, come to picture to uh, secure electronic control unit is a very uh, interesting idea okay and uh, uh, but long way to go but uh, at least there are good attempts and what is important point is we are handling IoT security or CPU security as a IoT or CPU or CPU security, not as a IT security. That's the important point that uh, we need to learn from this. So anyway, vehicular security is important, and I like this work here, uh, vehicular security point of view, and uh, dynamic watermarking has been used. Uh, what is the point here? Remember, I was mentioning that is a sensor and actuator. Okay, in a vehicular, uh, in a vehicle or autonomous car. Uh, the sensor needs to get, uh, sorry, the actuator needs to get uh, signal from the authentic sensor. That means which are its sensor which are supposed to give uh, value to it for next action. But if the actuator gets uh, signal from a hacker, then catastrophic things can happen. Okay, car can have accidents. Okay, so those things. So that is why uh, this is an idea where uh, the actuator is verifying the sensor data with the help of a um, uh, with the help of a dynamic watermarking and as a result uh, car security can be uh, maintained so that, that's a very difficult problem i have seen very few work this is the work that uh, i found that's why i thought of bringing to your attention this is an important problem called dynamic watermarking to solve uh, autonomous car security problem now blockchain i was mentioning long way to go okay we have uh, one of my student uh, uh, actually, rather two of my students are right now working on uh, how to make blockchain useful for IoT domain. It's not straightforward. Okay, blockchain has a lot of problems. So this uh, we uh, were the first people who started paying attention, and we wrote a magazine article. That's why in Idle Potential, it uh, Idle Potential has a lot more coverage. Actually, it reaches hundreds of thousand people. So we wrote this. Okay, and. Uh, uh, that is how uh, blockchain is not ready uh, for IoT and then we came up with the idea of uh, how we can remove the proof of work uh, from the original blockchain and uh, replace that with uh, something lightweight and as a result blockchain works in IoT. That was the big idea and we have very good results. And in this process uh, what we uh, said like uh, blockchain uh, right now we can classify them as validation type. These are um, energy uh, hungry or proof of work with the maximum energy then voting based these are reasonable energy overhead and latency overhead then uh, we, if we use blockchain for authentication we can completely it uh, like uh, uh, remove the proof of work and so on the concept of the algorithm and we can have uh, different uh, set of blockchain together all together so that is the idea and uh, we are working and uh, then in the process uh, we uh, mentioned that uh, this is where energy consumption happens this is where a lot of energy consumption happens and we need to replace this with something so that, that's the idea and uh, first we proposed a proof of authentication where we do not do the puzzle solving we do uh, some cryptographic authentication Okay, and as a result, uh, the power consumed here is completely safe. That's the idea, and doesn't need a hardware. A minor essential, it doesn't need uh, a lot of this. So we can call them as authenticator or trusted node. The way we we present it. So as a result, we have to go back and change uh, altogether the block structure of the uh, blockchain. Okay, so these are modifications we did. Okay, and uh, as a result, uh, we have different block structure. And then here is the idea of authentication process. Okay, with uh, new blockchain. Okay, how and a new authentication uh, with new blockchain without proof of work, like concern algorithm. How we achieve uh, the uh, basically the trust and so on. Okay, we propose ideas. Okay, we define certain trusted nodes. Those trusted nodes, uh, in a decentralized fashion, are authorized to to uh, authenticate uh, on trusted nodes. So that's the idea. 
Okay, and uh, what we found, uh, these are uh, running excellent. That is, we, we could verify uh, this uh, running in a uh, like um, Raspberry Pi like uh, platforms which consume five watt of power as compared to the original blockchain which is uh, kilowatts of power. Okay, we're running a lot of things. So that is the uh, uh, what you can say one of the excellent idea with the proof of authentication chain. So we'll be calling this as EG chain or something we are working on right now. And uh, what we verified that is uh, this running very fast, okay, with uh, uh, very minimal power. And uh, of course, this has a long way to go if you want to do this, for example, for public chain and uh, other things. But uh, that's a good beginning, and uh, one student is right now working. Then we also did another thing, what we call pop chain. In pop chain, what we did, uh, this is as uh, we claim that is the first effort where we are integrating pop in blockchain. And what is the job of POF here? Is to provide security because blockchain is not necessarily secure. And blockchain has a lot of security issues, privacy issues, and so on. So, anyway, so we integrated, and uh, this is a architecture that we provided how we can have POF okay, uh, in, uh, integrated in the blockchain, and as a result, the consensus uh, security and other things are running uh, through the POF. Okay, so we gave different algorithms for authentication. We call it uh, uh, proof of POF enabled authentication or POP, okay, uh, as compared to proof of work that originally proposed. And this is the idea that is your trusted nodes with the help of POP are doing authentication just in a matter of seconds. That's the idea here. And uh, again, we had to do a lot of changes. Uh, block structure we had to change, okay, and uh, a unique block token uh, instead of nonce that uh, it had originally. In the original blockchain, we introduce a concept of unique block token UBT, and then we introduce uh, uh, more information. Okay, that is POF ID and so on in, in this process. And this is the enrollment process. That means when a device comes, okay, and that is how it is enrolled, uh, and then uh, <coughs> uh, then uh, eventually when uh, access is needed, okay, particularly for medical domain and uh, uh, cyber physical system domain, these are the possibilities. There is a need for a transaction, there is a need for authentication. So we develop protocols that uh, uh, basically can be used uh, for foolproof security. So that means your blockchain okay, is working. At the same time, the security aspect of blockchain is completely done by a pop authentication, which is a significant uh, concept uh, um, uh, at the top of blockchain, which uh, not many researchers uh, have done. So this is a significant result uh, that we published as magazine article for wider uses uh, that came uh, in the March 2020 issue, where you ran uh, the security and privacy by design special issue. So I invite all of you to read more details of that. And we verify this is uh, like a uh, secret aspect using uh, Scyther tool and uh, this is uh, perfect. Uh, there is no secret flaw that we could encounter at that time. And uh, we have verified with uh, real life hardware. Okay, with we had instance a lot of pops here, then a different client and trusted node and all these things are Raspberry Pi model. So this is a, like a, a mimic of a, a internet and medical things uh, and or in other uh, internet of things or cyber physical system we can mimic uh, through this mechanism. And then uh, what we're trying to solve another kind of uh, problem of uh, blockchain that is the scalability. Okay, blockchain is not scalable. Blockchain cannot store a lot of data. So uh, we are uh, developing what we call multi-chain. This is another student uh, started working on uh, multi-chain. That means uh, we'll decide uh, in the cyber physical system context, we have a lot of devices, we have a lot of data. So how do we do device authentication? How do we keep information of the devices? At the same time, how do we keep information of the data? Okay, uh, so all these things are a uh, much more difficult problem and uh, blockchain doesn't scale. So we're trying to start, uh, develop what we call multi-chain so that uh, different chains we can use. Probably one idea is one chain keeps the data, another chain keeps uh, the devices, or uh, another thinking is completely upload the data uh, storage to a distributed file system like a uh, IPS and so on file system that is available. Anyway, so this is the research going on and this is we are very excited and this is where the second uh, column, you can see the original blockchain with uh, uh, that came from Bitcoin and then we provided a proof of authentication with a different blockchain that is running very well, but we said 
uh, scalability that is uh, how much data they can keep there are still issues so then actually people are trying tangle is another technology which is not exactly blockchain tangle technology is available hashgraph is another technology available and we are uh, running a different blockchain and we have developed a fast algorithm for that blockchain which is we call as multi chain or post blockchain and we developed the algorithm which we called a multi chain proof of authentication mac4 uh, we call it and this algorithm uh, is authenticating multi chain authenticating very fast compared to uh, other algorithms and uh, then what is important here is the blockchain data structure that means the blockchain is a data structure where the data is stored and those uh, data structure we are completely optimizing uh, through uh, with a directed sl graph link list okay we are uh, optimizing that list so that overall the blockchain that we have is compact so that can solve uh, the storage scalability problem that's the big idea here so we have started and uh, we have long way to go but this is a completely uh, paradigm shift uh, thinking so here if you see the summary of a uh, little bit discussion uh, here we try to solve this uh, the uh, taking uh, the the units consumed in the consensus we solved and then here we provided security by using puff in the blockchain and here in these uh, in, um, this uh, mac4 and so on we are trying to improve the uh, storage scalability and so on for the blockchain so these are uh, like a complete paradigm shift thoughts uh, that uh, we are doing uh, for the blockchain okay anyway so that means this block uh, structure which is static in the case of regular blockchain and uh, blocks are added chronologically one after another okay we are um, um, uh, trying to do different we are calling that a, a dynamic blockchain so that means uh, uh, the uh, these blocks can be optimized and overall uh, we have a compact uh, um, blockchain structure and again uh, we have to do a lot of uh, uh, corrections or modification to the um, uh, block structure so the, we added for example here we are uh, keeping track of uh, uh, distance of each block from the uh, genesis block and as a result we are able to we can optimize okay the block structure so that's the idea here and uh, we are just said we started we will be continue working so the results are very promising okay that is we are able to authenticate in certain milliseconds of time and uh, also the block compaction that means uh, compact block structure we are able to get which in a matter of uh, milliseconds of time and uh, uh, in terms of uh, smart grid security okay that is the energy cyber physical system a lot of problems are there people are trying okay and uh, then uh, like uh, one can um, solve by using uh, the way exactly security and privacy by design those things one can uh, definitely introduce here uh, to have uh, and uh, we, we haven't done this so mostly we have so far focused on a uh, healthcare domain but this is a big domain uh, that smart grid it has and uh, we will explore these ideas and uh, in terms of using blockchain has anybody tried uh, smart grid some solutions i'm seeing people have started talking okay and uh, uh, probably a lot of blockchains will be used in this domain as well and uh, this is uh, one work okay i was mentioning with the mnit jaipur with amit and other group uh, we have done medical domain uh, and so on and here in the energy sector uh, i'm working with nit raukela and this is a very interesting idea that i like that is uh, how we are we, we call it eternal thing the big idea here is uh, you design a iot node and that iot node is self powered by solar and it has security feature as a result it's always uh, able to uh, supply its own power and able to uh, be part of a smart agriculture or a smart city kind of environment that's the big idea here and this uh, uh, work has been completely this uh, chip has been fabricated and characterized and uh, this is actually accepted uh, in in the you can get it in it plus flow okay anyway and then we are second variation of this we are working what we call as eternal thing 2.0 where we are adding a, a, like a trojan resilience mechanism compared to the pop mechanism that we have here okay as another design paradigm so anyway so uh, uh, we have the chip and we are waiting for its characterization to uh, basically uh, submit anyway and uh, i was mentioning to you that is data uh, like uh, system and other things the uh, device all these are equal important secret feature so that is why uh, we are uh, basically this work uh, that is how we can have 
a uh, different edge server with secret mechanism so that we can have balanced data across the CPS and the security is well maintained and then potentially blockchain running on this is data center. That's the idea. Okay, so uh, under this idea, we uh, basically uh, published this article, uh, which is very well read. And th th this is very uh, unique idea we have that is uh, how these uh, yes data centers have uh, uh, proper load balancing and providing security. Anyway, and a very basic simple thing I wanted to mention here this figure that is okay, we're talking all big things, okay, no doubt. But we should not forget at the end, uh, the each data needs to be protected. Okay, system needs to be protected, device needs to be protected, data everywhere needs to be protected, and we can protect them using hardware software mechanisms. Okay, and uh, here is an example: is a hard drive or USB with a hardware encryption mechanism. And this is essentially our uh, hard drive storage or the non-volatile or permanent storage protection. But at the same time. In the embedded systems, okay, the memory that is uh, the uh, basically the SRAM uh, that means the cache, okay, the, where the computation happens, those need to be protected as well. Otherwise, one can uh, get uh, information from there. So those can be done, and we have tried some algorithms. Okay, and this is a very good uh, embedded system people point of view, uh, like how we can protect the memory. And with this idea, we had encryption decryption models running at the top of. Uh, a cache and to protect uh, even during computation all the information. And we had also done certain work that is uh, on the side channel resilience, okay, and uh, a lot of people are working, but we did a long time ago. Uh, the, this work I wanted to bring to your attention. It has still a lot of potential to uh, work in this area because uh, uh, I was mentioning that is uh, encryption can be defeated by DPA or uh, that is differential power analysis correlated power analysis very easily instead of defeating the encryption algorithm. Okay, so from the security by design point of view, okay, one uh, and we know now any smart system we are talking about will have AI. Okay, so a good trade-off of security and AI is needed and that trade-off differs uh, whether we are optimizing at the end, that means whether we are optimizing the security of our wearable and the intelligence that it can provide or implantable or the security of uh, the edge or a router with uh, at our home okay we are optimizing that okay or we are optimizing the security and energy in the cloud it has here it can have much bigger resource uh, and as a result uh, a lot more uh, heavy duty security and a lot more intelligence can be provided here so these are different trade offs so one has to have at different uh, nodes so in, the, in the overall CPS paradigm, and uh, uh, then only we can have a foolproof, uh, secure by design uh, approach uh, solving the different layers of the CPS. And uh, in a bigger CPS, definitely this is 101 access control point of view, all these things. Okay, variety of uh, what is the key message I'm providing here that is instead of just counting on encryption to provide security. Okay, how we can have varied of things. Okay, like here are medical signals, or like ECGs, and EEGs, all these, even finger vein, all these things are part of secret mechanism. As a result, uh, what can happen potentially is we are less dependent on the encryption kind of mechanism, which are uh, potentially uh, what you can say resource demanding in themselves are slow and may not be able to useful all the time on all uh, IoT and uh, uh, CPS domain. So these are things that may potentially be uh, uh, used as different paradigm uh, for security. Okay, so with this idea, we uh, worked on uh, NFC security that is uh, uh, near field communication. And this uh, security, we developed a new card. Okay, we call it Swing Pay. In this card, we provided uh, biometric security, which is like a credit card or identity card, whatever uh, you can use for. And this is uh, we developed a protocol. If we were using this as a credit card, uh, what are the pair model, pay model, all these protocols, and then yeah. so this is a foolproof secret mechanism uh, in in a, a credit card kind of thing uh, where biometric is used. The, that's the idea here. Similarly, people are trying for RFID. Okay, this is NFC. I mentioned the previous one. This is RFID. Okay, these are some. Uh, simple solutions uh, as of now when we have a RFID device, uh, for example, my uh, uh, passport, we keep it like this. Okay, 
Now, but uh, in a bigger context, we have to have a certain design paradigm, which uh, I haven't seen, we have not done as well, where uh, we go back to the RFID, the way exactly here, NFC card, design paradigm we went, we built it here. Similarly, how we can go to RFID, completely step zero of the design process and add secret feature, that is people can try, I'm just bringing it to the attention. So anyway, so all these things, when we have to consider when we are designing the overall CPS, uh, the uh, intelligent aspect of the machine learning aspect, so that we mention the trade-off as consistent with what I've been saying here, that is uh, in a, a secure by design approach, security and other uh, that uh, other characteristics of the CPS needs to be taken into account together, so that we have low overhead secret design, that, that's the point. So anyway, so uh, these things we have to think uh, about the intelligence when de dealing with the security. And uh, when we are dealing with the security uh, and intelligence together, data is very important, okay? So uh, how to have good data so that uh, uh, the data is real, okay? Uh, like this, uh, not like this, which is uh, looks like real, but it is not. So anyway, so uh, important uh, data, uh, getting right data is important, okay? And uh, I also want to mention here that is, uh, uh, fake data may give us bad models, okay? And fake hardware may give us very bad systems, okay, which can be hacked easily, okay? So here particularly uh, the right bottom, uh, that is car uh, issues, okay, the embedded hardwares, okay, that I consider as a very serious thing. For example, you have an issue which puts, let us say, automatic brake for your car, okay? And then that issue is bad issue, fake issue, then uh, what happens? Your brake may not work. Okay, that's the life-threatening situation. Okay, so that uh, I wanted to bring to your attention and uh, these kind of problems here, right side hardware, problems can happen if you have a compromised farmer or a reverse engineer hardware. Okay, all these can eventually lead to these kind of problems. Okay, so People, those who develop model and uh, develop AI from the data, some uh, some people are advocating, okay, if fake data is able to train a model, why don't you use fake data to train a model, okay? So, uh, like uh, the pre, uh, uh, EIC of uh, Conjunctive Magazine, who was before me, is Peter Corcoran from Ireland. So, he, this is his slide, okay? So, he says, okay, why don't you use fake data, which may be cheaper. Data is money. Okay, data is new gold, a lot of people say. So why don't you use that, okay? But people have their own thoughts. I just wanted to bring attention that uh, uh, data is important for AI, okay? And how we get the right data so that we have right model, that is critical. And uh, AI and security needs to be uh, work together uh, so that overall CPS is a very good CPS. Okay, and I have also mentioned how AI can have its own security issues particularly important in the co in the context of autonomous vehicles okay so anyway so uh, that is why i was thinking that is uh, uh, data we need to completely see uh, the life uh, cycle of the data where the data originates and where it is modeled so those whole life cycle you have to see and we need to probably uh, have a certain kind of uh, framework uh, so that uh, from the source to destination end everywhere we have some level of protection Okay, so maybe that is why, uh, like, uh, so we call, uh, I call this a secure data curation. That means uh, you take the data, raw data, and uh, curation means it's like uh, keeping the data in a pro proper way so that it can be used. Okay, so anyway, so filtering, aggression, all, all these things. So any step, okay, how we can do it in a, uh, in a framework where data is never compromised. So that's the idea. But anyway, this is uh, just as a question I put, people can think that way, secure data curation. I just coined the term. Okay. And then other secret aspect as mentioning ownership is a very important aspect. Okay, media that is a movie and other things. So as a hardware, okay, are important that one can think of. I just uh, not go to the details. Okay, and uh, so this uh, in fact I developed a long time ago. This data related and uh, uh, then also these things we do have some works. Okay, and this is the hardware that I gave long time ago, which is considered as the first low power water magnet chip. Okay, that is. Uh, uh, a watermark chip we designed which uh, comes up on 3 million power that uh, went to the uh, part of uh, camera and so on. Th that's a very significant work. And a lot of people have uh, been motivated uh, my, by those things. And here is an example from this is Austria who used these ideas. Okay, and this is another uh, 
uh, sensor based uh, watermarking this is uh, from canada they have also used uh, the watermark ideas that i gave anyway so with this so we have uh, basically we covered a big spectrum of uh, cyber physical system or internet of things uh, so security uh, by design uh, how we can use those to make full proof anyway so uh, security privacy related are important problems that we know we, we have extensively discussed that and uh, data device yes, ai all these needs to be secured okay we can uh, have software hardware based solutions hardware have uh, its own set of advantages uh, low overhead primarily and uh, uh, then it goes well with the design flow okay and what is secure security by design the key factor is simple is no retrofitting please simple okay that means you make this as a design flow so that we do not retrofit and a lot of uh, this is just a beginning okay privacy by design uh, has uh, came far then security by design okay, is just getting attention also a lot more work can be done and those paradigms in uh, is wide open to be used uh, in the healthcare domain uh, then uh, energy then uh, uh, transportation all these domains and overall okay this uh, sustainable iot uh, and other things that we get can build sustainable smart cities that the big picture so uh, with this i uh, thank you for uh, your patience uh, it's a long talk i was given two hours hopefully i covered quite a bit and uh, i'm ready to take any questions okay thank you sir so i think uh, we have one question from uh, gaurav yes gaurav you unmute your mic and you can ask your question hello yes uh, yeah hi sir uh, so uh, there's this thing uh, where we talked towards the end that data is the new gold mm -hmm. so in something like a uh, health cyber physical system uh, i mean yes. uh, tomorrow a big player may come in like google facebook or even our own uh, india's geo and mm -hmm. uh, they may uh, offer something like to the healthcare providers or even to the health medical device manufacturers that mm -hmm. uh, uh, you uh, you gave us the data like you gave us the reports generated by the patients and mm -hmm. in exchange uh, we are going to drive the prices down of the test and everything like let's say a blood test which normally cost a hundred dollars they are mm -hmm. going to come in and say it's going to be for $25 and just in return that you you need to give us the blood reports so uh, and uh, we are going to drive the advertising like we are going to uh, you know uh, give all those extra advertising to the patients like you know new services maybe even insurance uh, and things like that so mm -hmm. so is this like this is this comes more this this is not really a security issue but this comes more as a ethical and privacy uh, thing exactly right so uh, well, my question is one is this a concern for uh, um, for you as an engineer and two if it is uh, is is there a, a solution to it beyond laws like is there a technological solution to it okay it's a excellent question okay so this is definitely i don't think first of all uh, in the us healthcare sector i can tell they cannot take data easily okay this is personal privacy issues the hipa that is uh, uh, healthcare privacy act is there h i p p a hipa is there and they cannot just like that take uh, the uh, data okay that is first and second uh, your question is excellent as an engineering perspective okay engineering perspective if i see so that's the legal perspective okay privacy they cannot take okay and then engineering perspective uh, suppose they want to take the data they are, there has to be a, a privacy solution okay so there are solutions they call it anonymization that means uh, let's say whole city data okay with million population okay is there and the data how they make that uh, those data anonymous okay so that uh, like uh, whose data is what let's say person a uh, height is uh, 5 feet uh, 5 inch weight is this and uh, these are the health uh, records those uh, identification cannot happen okay so anonymization uh, other things those are methods are available okay and uh, sometimes you know this uh, overall big city data and other things are needed uh, to be processed okay but they are authorized people for example uh, state of uh, uh, rajasthan wants to process the data so that uh, it can keep track of uh, uh, the health problems of the state 
okay that's a different reason and that, that state government takes that and makes the data anonymous and processes that means how many problems uh, how many citizens have what kind of health problem or a city mayor takes the data okay and processes so what are the health problems of uh, uh, citizens living in that specific city so that they can accordingly design the hospital okay so those are uh, like epidemiology also point of view right now for example we are maintaining the pandemic uh, which city has what kind of uh, uh, covid 19 infection and so on so those are uh, data some may compromised okay but those are essentially going through a pro specific protocol by the government uh, agency and so on okay so those are different reason happening but in general uh, like uh, unless a pandemic like serious situation data will not go where you uh, the uh, direct person is identified okay and uh, engineering point of view there are private solution available where the, where the, the all this identification de-identification and all these things happens and then it can be used for the purpose that is intended as i said epidemiology or you want to make a plan uh, what kind of hospital is needed in a city how many beds are needed those kind of planning purposes where it's all made anonymous that is some way names are removed or data is shuffled okay let's say instead of writing one two three alphabetically some shuffling and other things are done so that uh, uh, from the data one cannot correlate who are the citizens okay uh, yeah sir so the onus for anonymity is on, on if i understand correctly is on the cloud uh, uh, right, exactly. So the, the uh, whoever is the IoT cloud, okay, or the CPU, the cloud server, okay, they are the ones who will. Uh, so there are algorithms available. That is uh, uh, privacy. That's why now, uh, like even though a lot of people are worrying for security, privacy. That is why has a lot of uh, uh, demand as well because of these reasons. Okay, how to particularly in US is uh, uh, like uh, even uh, in US. Okay, even my spouse uh, cannot see my data healthcare data unless i give the consent okay that's why this much more serious problem so that's why there are private solution and other solutions uh, are being explored a lot of solutions are available and it's always people want to get better solutions but uh, they are uh, there yeah, okay. thank you sir okay, thank you okay. so any further question so somebody uh, okay yeah uh, so sir, actually means you have touched upon very sensitive topic for uh, security for uh, IoT and uh, CPS because uh, particularly I see in India because people are not getting a trust still in this such kind of security, especially in mm -hmm. a Bitcoin or maybe in a telemedicine because uh, basically they are not accepting such kind of technology because of the some security vulnerability is there. Okay, but right. sir, when uh, when when I talk about the security. Then as a researcher, probably I would like to have a security, then I will add more and more layer to have a more robustness. But at the same time, yeah. I need to worry about the energy also. Okay, so exactly. as, a, as a researcher, for me, it is very difficult to know which comes first, whether I need to look for a security or maybe maybe I need to worry about the energy at the same time. So sir, what, yeah. what smart solution we have to think about that, whether maybe energy or security. Okay, so both uh, that's why this paradigm that is security by design, whatever has been coined, that's the motivation. Okay, we cannot, we can, we cannot say, oh, I'll make the most heavy duty security, but it may not run. Okay, it can drain the battery in no time. So uh, that is why the trade-off has to be there. Energy obviously is important, otherwise how the device will run. Okay, so we cannot have a security and drain all the battery. Okay, so that is why the, this paradigm, what I mentioned as secret by design is very important where we think uh, the energy aspect, the intelligence aspect, as well as security aspect as a trade-off. Okay, in fact, uh, the original inventors of uh, uh, privacy by design, they say you do all these things at the same time, you do a better job of all those. That means you have more security, you are doing a low power design and also you are making it, which is impossible as engineering point of view. Okay, but that is not original people's goal, but uh, uh, that's why I bring it down a little bit, less expectation that I say that is you have to have energy and uh, intelligence. I called ESR trade-off, okay, that is energy, security and response. Response means AI and its decision. Okay, ESR trade-off, uh, that's why I called. Okay, we have to have those, so not just uh, security by design uh, in a, a traditional way, the way originally invented, that is uh, not have a zero-sum game. That means you win on everything. That is uh, engineering impossibility. That's why uh, we have to have a trade-off. 
okay some security provided so that some overhead on the energy and then some intelligence provided so some overhead so that's the trade off okay but it's a difficult problem definitely okay that's a pop we have done pop is a very good I, it has a lot of promise okay yes. even though i myself can give counter example okay that pop may not work certain scenarios but uh, at least it's solving the energy aspect okay doing very fast and uh, less energy overhead and some security yes okay thank you sir so sure. is there thank any further question i don't see any i so presented there is no but I, there are very much active participants in the youtube also but uh, because of some uh, no, no reason, problem they are, they are, sir, they are, yeah. they, they are not able people. to interact with us but probably they can contact you sir for uh, through yeah. mail uh, if they have through any email uh, and maybe in let's hope next year or so uh, i'll be able to travel yes <laughs> yeah definitely we would be happy to host you sir over here sure sure we yeah, will see okay, okay thank you everybody okay thank you thank you sir sure, sure. good night Thanks. sir